big boy. 2014. Wish y'all the best of luck. Just got done with dinner with the KR4 crew, and now it's time to socialize. It was awesome. Thanks, Stu. You rock. Friday night was really cool because they had a fun dinner set up. You know, the so, so guys like Stu Baylor uh, and his boys, uh, Grant and Stu, came over. We had a couple other riders come out there, big crawfish boil, all that fun stuff. It was really awesome. Um, to be able to hang out just in that family atmosphere and um, it was it was fantastic They were super hospitable being at the track like that was great I won't lie we probably had a little bit too much moonshine and uh, maybe a few too many adult beverages Friday night But we woke up Saturday raring to go uh, Went in South Carolina drink moonshine at least that's what I'm told so here you go Uh, so we got uh, Steven all ready to go there on Saturday. Uh, he had a fantastic time. I know the footage that he has was freaking amazing. Um, you could see his ear-to-ear -ear grin from where I was out taking pictures and doing shooting video and stuff like that. It was, it was uh, really neat to see and I'm glad he got to experience that. Okay, Steven, I have to tell you, I hope you wore your big girl panties. That is a maniac driver. Hey, sorry about that. That drag from the dead start leaves my goggles laying on the damn floor. So I'm just getting pelted and blasted with sand and rocks and all kinds of crap. So I was like trying to pick them up with my feet. So by the time I got them on, we were like three corners into it. The, the green flag dropped, man. We, we got the thing started. A little bit of a rough start, but uh, Steven was fumbling around for his goggles and everything else, but uh, it was clear sailing and we caught the tail end of the uh, second row uh, before the first lap was over. And uh, uh, just kind of kept it rolling. Yeah, Stephen pointed out some good lines. It was a big issue right out of the gate, uh, first lap, not knowing where to go. Uh, dust was a big factor because we had the dust from the uh, 10 buggies ahead of us. Since we had nobody around us, we had no one to follow. And uh, so uh, Stephen and I, I mean, we were trying to, he was pointing, hollering, I was kind of point, er, trying to point the buggy in the right direction, holler, find me lines. And uh, we got it through. There's no explaining how intense and fast and crazy the whole race and experience is. Uh, get out there and do it any way you can. The KR4 Arrive and Ride program. Go do it. It's a blast. I didn't know how the start was going to go. I've been, I'm decent at starts. Uh, I've gotten a few hole shots in my past, but I don't, I've never really like said, I'm, go, I'm a hole shot guy. And I, I felt like I was doing awesome. Going to the woods was absolutely amazing. Uh, bike rode great, especially for having never really even uh, really had a chance to test it. Because there is no riding at a GNCC. There's no pre-riding, there's no pit riding, there's no place to test. 
you pretty much have to show up ready to go. And that's where the KR4 Arrive and Ride program is so fantastic, is that that bike was red T2 race. Um, unfortunately, not really taking the time to, to properly set up the cockpit um, was definitely a downfall. After that first lap, I had to shoot into the pits and I asked them to move the clutch lever down because my forearm was just blowing up. Um, it was just too high for my liking. I tell you right now, this shit's harder than it looks. And when your hands hurt like a muscle, then it's hard. I just said, you know what? We started making a couple little mistakes that could get dangerous. And I'm like, I had a great time. It's been a fun, fun experience doing this KR4 arrive and ride. Um, am I going to do it again? Absolutely. Should you? Damn straight. Um, after that, we kind of took a picture when we saw the podium and we shot to the airport. It was unfortunately because it was in Charlotte where our flight got canceled or delayed. It didn't even come into Charlotte until like midnight. Um, the bar closed at 10.30, so we definitely stayed there for a little while and had a few too many Crown and Cokes. So we got home about 3.30 a.m. Monday morning, and we had left the house at 3.30 a.m. Friday morning. It was exactly 72 hours of, uh, of Woody and Steven's Arrive and Ride adventure. Um, it's a program I highly suggest that you check out. They're really cool people, and I'm super glad that we had the opportunity to kick ass with those dudes.